If you're unfamiliar with NASA's recent DART mission, check out the video in the top right corner, as I explain more about it there. Not enough flat earthers have made comments about the DART mission. Every time a significant event in spaceflight happens, I wait a few days, then I start looking around to see what the smooth brains have to say. DART hasn't made very many waves, it seems, but let's see what Leo has to say about it. Spoiler alert, it's pretty dumb. So let me set the scene. We're on board NASA's DART probe as it does 14,000 miles an hour through a vacuum on a kamikaze mission hurtling towards an asteroid. We join the action when they're 668 miles away from impact, like I say, doing 14,000 miles an hour. We're going to look at a short clip, and again, I'm going to highlight the obvious problems. And I'll start with, at a distance, the asteroid, or asteroids, look like computer graphics. When the so-called probe gets really close to the asteroid, we get a couple of very clever little cuts, and then the asteroid, which is CGI, then has rocks superimposed onto the face of it. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh boy, Leo, that was a lot of gish galloping you did there, but let's go over it. First, we have the classic flat earther tactic of put supposedly in front of everything to discredit without actually doing any effort to discredit, which, you know, drink. Then we have an unsubstantiated claim that the distant asteroids look like computer graphics, which at this point is getting pretty absurd. A really, really good render of an asteroid would be practically indistinguishable from reality. So at this point, when you say looks like CGI, all I can think is, but CGI now looks real. So it ends up being a moot point unless you do actual VFX breakdowns to explain what gives something away as CGI, but we should know better than to think Leo can actually do work. Third, we have a claim that close up, the rocks on the asteroid's surface appear to be superimposed. I cannot wait for that part. Seriously, I really want to hear you justify that, Leo. Last, but certainly not least, Leo mentioned some clever cuts in the video, which he's talking about a series of still frames. The DART probe was taking still photos of its target during approach every few seconds or so, so I don't know what he means by that, but I'm excited to find out. Get your bibs, everyone. Our dear Leo has laid out an absolute buffet of idiocy today. This is supposedly about science, about Earth's defense against asteroids, but as we're about to see, this is nothing more than a charade. Drink. So let's join the action. Two, what was it, 668 miles out, doing 14,000 miles an hour. The team is standing, just recognizing this moment years in the making. It is really nice to see them relax a little bit, get off from those computers that they've been glued to and just appreciate this moment that's coming. Yeah, and they've earned this. Um, it's just great to see them there. Absolutely ridiculous, and as you can see, the asteroids on our screen look nothing more than old school computer graphics. Why? Because exactly, that's exactly what they are. And if they actually were asteroids, Leo, what would they look like if not exactly like that? I'd like to note that Leo has apparently recorded this video in 360p, so of course it looks like shit. The actual high definition images are actually, even at this distance, pretty damn good. Now we're going to forward the action a little bit here. To near impact. We'll come to about here. Remember what I said about not knowing how to do work? Yeah, it sounds like your co-workers there are done break, Leo. Time to get back to it. Oh my goodness, look at that. Looks like control system settling down, angular rates look really good. I think we're going to get the investigation team some good pictures. Wow. Uh, no, no, come on, we can do better than that. <laughs> you're right, you can do better than that. This is terrible. This is supposed to be about science, where you're traveling at 14,000 miles an hour in a probe, or you, this camera's on a probe that's doing 14,000 miles an hour, that's going to smash, supposedly, into an asteroid, all in the name of science to see if it can displace or dislodge or have any effect upon this asteroid as part of so-called Globe Earth's defense for future against asteroids. But the silly thing is here, if this was really about science, 
you would have just you would have used two probes one the kamikaze one and another to film this from the side profile where you see all the action taking place and you don't lose your data because your probe's so-called smashed into an asteroid <laughs> Oh, you didn't. Leo, you didn't. Really, man? Really? Okay, so DART stands for, wait for it, double asteroid redirect test. Why double? Because there were two spacecraft. One is the DART spacecraft, the other is the Lycia CubeSat, a small companion probe that was meant to watch and analyze DART's impact from a third-person perspective. That's exactly what they did, Leo. It's just that CubeSats are tiny, cheap probes with very conservative construction, meaning it took a while to transmit those images back. But we got them, and here they are. Now, of course, when you look at Leo's comments, some of the top comments are pointing out exactly what I just said, that he did in fact get a second perspective on the impact exactly as he had asked. And what does Leo have to say? Tosh. Not good enough. Absolute tosh. This, Leo, is called moving the goalpost. And of course, if there was any movement in the asteroid, because of the probe, it would be filmed side on and captured in a scientific manner by the other probe. Wait, you think they're trying to film the movement, Leo? Hell no. You're not going to see the asteroid's orbit change, especially not in the blackness of space with no reference point. It's going to take watching its movement over time and doing the math to see the movement, and that's exactly what they did. Your brain is so hilariously childish, Leo. But as we're about to see, we don't get any of that, which in itself highlights the absurdity of this, because this is going to supposedly smash into the asteroid at 14,000 miles an hour. You're not going to get any data regarding whether or not this asteroid moved. Not that this is real anyway, but I'm just taking it just believe in them for a second and still highlighting the absurdity. There's a delay in communications as well. So by the time this thing smashed into the asteroid, with the delay, you're not going to get any data back. You're certainly, because the craft is smashed to pieces, not going to know or have any ideas about if this made any difference to the asteroid, moved it in any shape or form whatsoever. Oh, that's so cute. He thinks the only way to gain data about the event is by direct real-time observation from the location it's at. Dude, how do you think they knew where to send DART? Because we know where the asteroid is. DART knows where the asteroid is. DART knows where it is at all times. It knows this because it knows where it isn't. By subtracting where it is from where it isn't, or where it isn't from where it is, whichever is greater, it obtains a difference, or deviation. The guidance subsystems on DART use deviations to generate corrective commands to drive the spacecraft from a position where it is to a position where it isn't, and arriving at a position where it isn't, it now is. That position is Dimorphos, and consequently, by arriving here, Dimorphos then was driven to a position where it isn't from a position where it was. It's all very simple, Leo. Which again, highlights the absurdity of this. And like, I've said previously, these NASA engineers, these people who work at NASA, are grown adults whose minds never, ever, ever return from Disney World. Look. Starting to see those individual boulders there. You can see shadows of uh, the various rocks on the surface. Impact. It's amazing, guys. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it is unbelievable. Absolute tosh. Computer graphics for a while. Then it changes to a computer graphic with a, like an image of rocks superimposed onto the top of it. Disguised cleverly in a little jolty cut, as we're about to see. So I assume that he means when, knowing it's about to impact the surface, the spacecraft starts to take photos more rapidly, allowing for more individual images of the close-up asteroid. Nothing to justify him saying computer graphics, of course. He just says it is. Looks to me like we're headed straight in. Fourteen thousand miles an hour. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh my goodness. 
Imagine how good this would have looked from a side profile, seeing this, capturing all this in all its glory, rather than the tosh we're about to see. You mean like this? Eight, yeah. Seven, oh, six, wow. Five, four, three, two, one. And there's your rocks superimposed onto the CGI asteroid. And that gets these naive individuals, these NASA test engineers, these supposedly intelligent individuals, who, like I said, left their minds and brains at Disneyland when they were kids, because there's no discernment, just gullibility and the minds of fantasists that rely on data to fulfill their fantasies. Ridiculous. What discernment have you displayed, Leo? I was expecting more about the superimposed rocks, but you just say it and forget about it. Not to mention, we've been seeing those same rocks in every image so far. We're just closer now. The harsh shadows make them look a little odd, but superimposed? Evidence required, my dude. Gosh. Oh, wow. Awaiting visual confirmation. All right. We got it. No offense, lads. I could do better myself on a free app on my phone. Yeah? Like I say, if this was real, you would have filmed this from another probe from the side on, which would have been much more scientific, far superior to this footage, and of course meant you would have actually got some data. Because there's no way with a delay, if this was real, that you'd get any data back about what difference this probe meant hitting this asteroid anyway, even if this was real. None. There's Alzheimer's Leo again, repeating the same tosh he said a minute ago, and I'll repeat again that the data comes, like in every experiment, in the before and after. You see where the asteroid was, then after, you see where it is. Now, has anyone seen my walker? And that's the confirmation of impact. Billions of dollars, and this is the confirmation of impact. This is what drives people wild in the control room of NASA. And this is how easy it is to fool gullible individuals. Like I said, if this was real, you would have had two probes. Three times, dude? This is what we call padding the runtime, Leo. Holy shit, we heard you, and you were given what you asked. You're just mad about one part of the mission, the live tracking, and of course, at that exact moment, how else are you going to confirm that the spacecraft hit the target? By waiting for a loss of signal, Leo. That's how this works. Your incredulity, your expectation of more, which you scoff at even when you get, all of it means nothing compared to reality. We punched an asteroid, and you're crying about it like we punched you. If you enjoy this content, consider hitting the subscribe button. If you really enjoy this content, consider donating on Patreon, becoming a member, buying some of my books on Amazon, or buying some of my merch. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you over the curve, Space Cowboys.